the Donny B channel. So, as you can see, we got the car started. Very exciting stuff. And we actually got a little tuning done with it. And we, as you can see here, we're back here in my garage. And the 87 Mustang is back here at home. We still have a little bit more tuning sessions to do with it. Got a little PCV issue I got to deal with. And a little bit of an oil leak that I'm still dealing with. But beyond that, it's pretty much done. So, um, it's got some footage here for you guys to watch. Uh, just in regards to kind of the things you're going to have to deal with when working with the Microscore and the Tuner Studio setup. So, um, let's go ahead and get to work on that and uh, see what's going on. Uh, plug it in and make sure you got the appropriate drivers and stuff and make sure that um, it actually connects to the computer. Um, it's going to have those settings already on the car. You just have to go into your basic settings here and you can set up what fuel injectors you have. Um, you can see here, uh, you can look at the required fuel and make sure everything is set up. If you have a bigger injector, like I do, if you have a 60 pound injector, uh, mine seems to run good at the, at the uh, squirts per cycle here at two. Of course, you'd wanna adjust this all to the correct cylinders and everything, uh, engine size, and if you have any question about the getting the CC and everything, you can go to these question marks and you can go to these little calculators here and you can get the appropriate size. Of course, my injectors are 630cc injectors and um, yeah, pretty easy stuff. Very important is actually have your, uh, verify your timing. You'll actually want to get a timing light and have another friend to verify timing. Uh, you go up here to ignition settings and go up to your wheel decoder. And at first you're going to want to switch it over to fixed timing. And once you do that um, and you can uh, switch it over. You're going to put in your amount here. Um, I put mine at 20 and then of course you can change your offset uh, your trigger angle offset in order to reach that proper amount. Once you do that and you turn on the car uh, if you get it running um, you may have to loosen your distributor bolt in order to turn the timing in order to get it to start. Once you get it started you just want to verify what it's at and once you get it to read the exact same um, you'll hit burn of course after you make that change down there at the bottom. Burn's always going to be around the same spot. You're going to go up and uh, change the timing under, right now set the use table. Uh, that's because once it's verified you can use table. But if you go to fixed, you're going to want to input another number. So to test it, mine was at 20. Once it matched 20, I changed that to 30. And um, after you hit 30, hit burn. And uh, the timing, you should hear a, a drastic change in how your car is running. And then you'll have some with the timing light verifying if it's at 30. If it's at 30, that means you know you're good and that the computer is not controlling the timing. So you'd go up to fixed timing and switch it to use table. Hit burn, of course. And that's pretty much it. All right, we're going to go ahead and start the car up. And um, it's getting closer to where it starts up very easily. But um, we got the uh, computer linked to the micro squirt. So we're going to go ahead and just crank it over. It's got this car's got a cam as you guys know, and uh, the idle on it is uh, pretty well locked in. But it's uh, it does surge a little bit when it's on its warm up enrichment stage, so uh, we'll let it kind of do its thing here. But here's what I wanted to show you. So, get the laptop closer. All right. So you can see here my AFR right now is showing on the computer at. Um, 14.4, 14.5, and on the gauge here, we're a, like a full AFR off, it looks like. Pretty close. Um, let's see here. There you go. Now you guys can get a good shot of that. But essentially, you want them to read close. We They don't have to be spot on, but you want them to be close. So, um, yeah, as you can see here, it's jumping around. It's off by about probably one full, almost one and a half full of uh, AFR off. So what we're going to do to fix this, to remedy this, we're going to go up to our tools. We're going to calibrate AFR sensor, or calibrate AFR table, I should say. All right, so here's our voltage. We're going to go in here, and we're just going to make a slight adjustment. So as you can see, you can really dial it down to the tenth degree here so let's go ahead and just jump this up to 10.2 after you make a change make sure you write to controller and then you'll notice the car kind of fl uh, flutter a little bit it changes up and now we can see if we're getting any closer 
to here. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. So, um, kind of leave it at this setting for now. So the cool thing is, like, if your car has a hard time starting when it's warm, like mine did uh, originally with the factory computer, uh, you can just go to this uh, start idle and go to your crank uh, cranking pulse percentage. You can see here that you got your um, cranking pulse width, and it even gives you some cool tips down here in regards to uh, what you should probably focus on. I noticed my car here, um, in between 200 and 100, it seems to start up fine. Um, you can see here, uh, this is actually at 178, so it's almost at full operating temperature. Chart represent. You can see the percentage here. So you can see I dropped mine down at this uh, operating temperature uh, between 92 and 87. So you can see here, start the car up for you guys. Starts up just fine. Of course, the car is hot, so it's going to surge a little bit, but you'll see uh, here that the idle finds itself pretty darn quick that's already getting better which is way better than the factory computer ever was look at that already found its idle that's awesome other items you're gonna mess with is really gonna just gonna be fuel and timing um, you're gonna want to go into your ignition settings and go to your AF uh, your ignition table you can see here on uh, mine since mine's a turbo car they're very conservative and very safe especially up once you get into the uh, over 100 kPa which is starting to make boost and when you start uh, building boost, you're going to be in this area. And you can see my timing is pretty much locked in around 17, 17 and a half, and 18 at the max. So, um, of course, you can just still make adjustments to these, but this is a good, like, just uh, safe timing table for now. Uh, fuel table, you really won't have to make too many adjustments to start off with. If anything, make it a very rich table and then let auto tune pull. Uh, fuel out. Shit. Uh, pretty soon here, uh, I'll go ahead and take you guys out for a little spin. You'll see how the uh, auto tune here works. Um, the cool thing is, is that you can go into advanced settings, and uh, for your initial like first couple drives, or maybe your first drive, you uh, will, will want to switch this to easy because it'll make the most drastic changes. So say if you're running extremely lean or extremely rich, it'll pull the most fuel out or add the most fuel in those cells. And once you drive around for probably a good half hour, it'll be locked in pretty well. Then you can start um, auto-tune again and uh, you'll want to switch it to normal and then it'll make uh, very minimal changes. It'll kind of just start getting itself going. You'll want to do this, uh, the auto-tuning for quite a while. Um, for a few days because you want this uh, to be able to gather as much data as possible so your car runs good. Sneak peek of uh, the kind of things you're going to have to deal with with working with Tune Studio and the Micro Squirt setup. As you can see it's pretty intuitive once you get a hang the hang of it you'll have no problem really getting the car tuned. I still have a few things to iron out. Um, I haven't really put the car into any boost really. Um, I did put it into about five pounds of boost just to kind of get the cells working in the boost area. And um, I can't stress enough, if you're gonna use MicroSquirt and Tuner Studio, make sure you do verify the timing. That's one of the most important steps that you cannot skip out on. Make sure you do that. Um, coming up, we got a few more things uh, for the car. Um, I'm gonna make sure I have your, cover a uh, full-on review for the installation of the on Performance Turbo Kit. Um, so stay tuned for that. that will be coming very soon with my overall thoughts and the additional things I had to do and how much I spent total on doing the whole turbo setup. <clears throat> so we got that coming, so stay tuned for that. Also, uh, I'm going to have a full-on driving review video of the car after it's all tuned up and ready to go. I'll take you for a spin with me, and uh, we'll give you my full-on reaction and overall thoughts of driving a turbocharged Fox body with the Optimus Performance Turbo Kit. So that's coming all as well. 
All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek. Again, I didn't go into a lot of detail. Um, there's a lot of good videos out there that cover the the Tuner Studio and Micro Square and Mega Square, all that stuff. That do a very good job, so make sure you check out those videos on YouTube. So I just wanted to give you guys a basic overview of what I'm working with. Pretty easy stuff, and, of course, the kit that I bought was built for my car, so I already had a general map to work on, which is really cool. So if you had a Fox body, you want to go with the Micro Square setup, I recommend it because it's really intuitive, and once you get uh, playing around Tuner Studio, uh, you'll learn pretty quick. The learning curve on it is uh, pretty easy. Um, I definitely recommend it. All right, guys, so we still got a few more things coming out this year, um, so stay tuned for that. I appreciate you all watching. We'll see you soon.